All right, PSA testing, Ray. Seems like everyone's heard of it. Yeah. But uh, I'm thinking most people probably don't really know what it all means. Exactly. So that's our deep dive today. Figuring out this whole PSA thing. That's right. We've got two main sources to help us. Okay. First up, the Mayo Clinic, their page on the PSA test. Super informative. Yeah. And then from the HealthWise Knowledge Base, they have this really clear breakdown of the PSA test. Sounds good. So our mission. Well, PSA testing is kind of controversial, right? People hear different things. Definitely. And I think the results themselves can be kind of tricky to understand. Yeah, absolutely. But we want to help make sense of all that. Yeah. Starting with the basics. What is this PSA thing anyway? Oh, okay. Sure. So PSA stands for prostate-specific antigen. Right. It's a protein made by the prostate gland. Right. Both sources mention that having some PSA in your blood is totally normal. Yeah, yeah. But here's where it gets interesting. It's mostly found in semen. That's kind of key to understanding why PSA levels can go up for reasons besides cancer. Yeah, exactly. Like imagine getting a test and the numbers are high. Right. And it turns out it's just because of, uh, well. Activity. Yeah, exactly. Activity a couple days before the test. That's why you got to look at the whole picture, you know, not just one number. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. But then it makes you wonder why even test for PSA in the first place? Right. Well, if it can be so easily thrown off. The main reason is early detection. Oh, okay. With any cancer, the earlier you catch it, the better the chances of successful treatment, right? Makes sense. And that's what the PSA test is all about. So it's not like a for sure diagnosis. No, 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 no. It's more like a uh, screening tool. Like a heads up. Yeah, exactly. A heads up. Okay. Okay. It's not giving you a definite answer, more like a signal to look into things further. Gotcha. And like I said, the earlier you find prostate cancer, if it'll sad there, yeah. the better your odds are. Makes total sense. But then the Mayo Clinic, they list all these other things that can cause high PSA levels. Right. Like an enlarged prostate. They call that BPH, by the way. Okay, BPH, got it. And then there's prostatitis. Even just getting older can raise your PSA. So how are you supposed to know if it's really cancer then? That's the million dollar question, right? Yeah. And that's why you have to talk to your doctor, seriously. Okay. They can look at your situation, you know, yeah. your age, family history, if you've got any symptoms going on. Right. And they can help you make sense of those PSA numbers. So it's not as simple as just high PSA equals cancer. No, not at all. There's way more to it. Way more. Like you were saying about an enlarged prostate BPH. Right. That's super common as guys get older. Really? Yeah. The prostate just gets bigger naturally. Yeah. And when it's bigger, it makes more PSA overall. Okay. Doesn't automatically mean cancer, but it can bump up those PSA levels. Gotcha. So age and prostate size, those are factors. What about prostatitis? The Mayo Clinic mentioned that one too. Right. Prostatitis, that's when the prostate's inflamed or infected. Oh, okay. And just like with BPH, when the prostate's irritated, yeah. it can pump out more PSA. So anything that messes with the prostate can mess with your PSA levels. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Which is why you need that context, you know? Yeah. One PSA test result, it's got to be looked at alongside your whole health history, all the other stuff going on. I bet this is where people start getting confused. Oh, absolutely. Seems like a lot to keep straight. It is, and that's why it's so important to talk to your doctor. Yeah. They can help you sort it all out, figure out what to do next, if anything. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But I think a lot of people listening might be wondering, like, yeah. if this PSA test isn't perfect and all this stuff can affect the results, right? what's the point? Why even bother getting tested? That's a really good question, and it brings us to one of the trickiest parts of this whole PSA thing, understanding the limitations, you know, and the potential risks, right. because no test is perfect, right? and PSA test, well, it's no exception. Hmm. So what are we talking about here? What kind of limitations? One of the big things is you can get what's called a false positive. Oh, okay. That's where your PSA level is high, but you don't actually have cancer. So it's like a false alarm. Exactly. And that can lead to a lot of unnecessary worry. Yeah, I bet. You might end up getting more tests, even a biopsy. Right. Which, you know, biopsies have their own risks too. So it's not a risk-free thing, this testing. No, not at all. And I guess it goes the other way too, right? You mean a false negative? Yeah, like where the PSA is normal, <laughs> but you do have cancer. Oh yeah, definitely. So it's yeah. not foolproof. No, not at all. And then there's that whole thing about overdiagnosis. Right, the Mayo Clinic mentioned that. Yeah, they said the PSA test might find cancers that are super slow growing. Right. Like they'd never actually cause any problems during a guy's lifetime. Exactly. And that's where things get kind of ethically tricky. How so? Well, you could end up treating something that wasn't really a threat. 
You mean going through treatment and all the side effects? Yeah, exactly. For a cancer that might never have even cause symptoms. Precisely. Wow. That's a lot to think about. It is. And the treatments for prostate cancer, like surgery, radiation, hormone therapy. Right. They can all have some pretty serious side effects, which yeah. can really impact your quality of life. So if the cancer wasn't even going to be a problem. Right. Those side effects seem even worse. And you know. You know. Absolutely. Okay. So it sounds like deciding to get a PSA test. Yeah. It's not a simple yes or no. No, it's definitely not. There's a lot to weigh. There is. It's like the potential benefits, finding it early. Right. Maybe having more effective treatment. Right. But then there's the potential risks, the false positives, the overdiagnosis, and then the treatment itself. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance. So let's say you've talked to your doctor. You've thought about the pros and cons, and you decide to go ahead with the test. Okay. What happens next? Especially if the results come back high. Right. The Mayo Clinic talked about a few things to consider at that point. Yeah, and this is where it's really important to have that back and forth with your doctor. Like a real conversation. Yeah, it's not just about the test itself. Right. It's about what you do with that information. Okay, so what's the first step, usually? Usually, you'll talk to your doctor about your risk factors. Okay. You know, your age, family history, whether you're African American, your overall health. So it's like putting all the pieces together. Exactly. To get the full picture. Right, and then you got to talk about... What happens if the PSA is elevated? Okay. Your doctor might suggest more tests. Like what? Like a biopsy to see if there's actually cancer there. And biopsies, those aren't risk-free either, right? No, they're not. So it's important to understand those risks and benefits too. So there's even more decisions to make after the PSA test. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, it seems like having a doctor you trust is super important through all of this. Couldn't agree more. Like someone you can really talk to. Definitely. Ask all your questions. Absolutely. Feel comfortable talking about your options. That's key. This is where the HealthWise source brings up something called active surveillance. Oh, right. What is that exactly? So with active surveillance, instead of jumping right into aggressive treatment. Like surgery or radiation? Yeah. You basically monitor the cancer really closely. Okay. You get regular PSA tests, digital rectal exams, maybe some imaging studies. And the idea is... You only treat it if the cancer starts looking more aggressive. So it's kind of like a wait and see approach. Yeah, but with very careful monitoring. Okay, I see. This is often a good option for men with slow-growing cancers. Right. The kind that probably won't cause problems anytime soon. So they can avoid all the potential side effects of treatment. Exactly, while still keeping an eye on things. Makes sense, but I bet active surveillance can be tough emotionally for some people. Oh, definitely. Knowing you have cancer. Yeah. But not doing anything about it right away. It's a big psychological thing. Right. Some yeah. guys just can't handle the waiting and watching. They'd rather get it treated. And I totally get that. It's really personal. It is. It all comes down to your individual preferences and how much risk you're comfortable with. So once again, it goes back to that conversation with your doctor. Yeah. Figuring out what's best for you. Exactly. There's no one size fits all answer here. <laughs> this is all super informative, but I got to say, yeah. I'm sure some listeners are feeling a little overwhelmed right now. Probably. It's a lot to take in. It is. So maybe let's try to boil it down to some key takeaways. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so key takeaways. PSA testing. Yeah. All right. So first off, the PSA test, it's a screening tool not a diagnostic one. Right, right. Meaning a high PSA doesn't automatically equal cancer. And a normal PSA doesn't mean you're in the clear either. Exactly. It's just one piece of the puzzle. Okay, that's important to remember. Yeah, and the second thing, we talked about all those other things that can affect your PSA levels. Age, prostate size, prostatitis. Diet. So if you get a high number, don't freak out. Talk to your doctor. Exactly. They can help you figure out what it means. Okay, what else? Third thing, remember those risks we talked about? With PSA testing? The false positives, mm. overdiagnosis, and then all the potential downsides of treatment. Right. You got to weigh those risks against the potential benefits of finding cancer early. It's a balancing act. It is. And the last key takeaway, I think the most important one, yeah. it's a shared decision. Between you and your doctor. Exactly. Yeah. You work together to decide if the PSA test is right for you. Okay. And if you DO get tested, you talk about the results together, what they mean, what to do next. Seems like having a doctor you can really talk to is crucial. Oh, absolutely. Someone you trust, someone you can be open with. Ask all your questions. Yeah, and really feel comfortable talking about all the options. Knowledge is power. Right. 
Absolutely. The more you understand about PSA testing and prostate cancer, yeah. the better prepared you are to make decisions that are right for you. Couldn't agree more. This has been such a great deep dive. I feel like we covered so much. We did from what PSA, even IS, yeah. to all the things that can make those levels go up or down. Right. And then the risks and benefits of testing, all the different treatment options. Oh, and don't forget about active surveillance. Right. 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 That's worth looking into. Definitely. It could be a good option for some men, something to talk to your doctor about. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into PSA testing. This is a complex topic. It is. But hopefully now you feel more informed, ready to have those conversations with your doctor. That's the goal. And make the best choices for you. Until next time, stay curious. <laughs> <laughs>